Guys, um, I don't think that systems and systems theory and subsystems and all of that and how it operates is uh, the easiest concept there is. We, we have to really re-look, ask other opinions. Uh, I also asked other people opinions in terms of this and how this works. So uh, let's see uh, what happens here. Okay. So they make the comment there to say that all of those things are systems. And I think we agree with that. The table tennis, you'll see now, the watts, etc., etc. So are we looking at a system? When, I, when, when we talk about that, I want you to think companies and organizations because that's, that's where you're going to work one day. So can you identify the individual parts? Do they affect one another? Uh, do they uh, produce... Uh, that effect that is different from the effect uh, of uh, part of its own. You can't see that there. Uh, does the effect uh, persist in a variety of circumstances? Right, let's see. We answer all those questions. Yeah, I, uh, hmm? I tried, to be honest. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll have to deal with that. So are we happy with ping pong as a system? Yeah. It's identify individual parts. We've got part one, part two, part three, and part four. Good. Um, are we happy with that they affect one another? That you've got opponents, you've got law of physics, you've got the rules of the game, law of physics again. All right? Uh, together these parts create a unique effect. We try to make it... Uh, as easy as possible. The effect can be replicated in a multitude of situations or multiple situations. Does that make sense? What, what do we mean there? Yeah? It means if something has a ripple effect, it means that it affects other things that are linked to it. So, for example, like we use the AFSA example or something, if something's going well in a certain subsystem, and the communication is good, then it, that, that positivity spirals down to other systems as well. And if it's negative, it works in the same way. Okay, but here there are, I think, various options. You'll, you'll see now where we, where, we, where we get to this, because in this whole systems and subsystems operational, we have to apply systems thinking. And what are we talking about when we talk about systems thinking? Let's see. Finalizing and uh, finding and analyze systems is difficult work, and we've got a couple of slides and a set of tools and methods to help us along the way. Let's see what they say. Okay, there can be some surprises, which there are always some surprises. We can get back to that. Hey, eh? now the the fundies tell me, and I've tried to to talk to quite a number of people before our class today that we are linear thinkers in a non-linear world. Shannon, you would know that from a psychology point of view. So let's hear, what, what do you guys, and if we're on the wrong way, you can help us. Uh, what, what, is, what is linear thinking? Straightforward, right? What does straightforward mean? One-minded. One right, yes. Not out of the box, yes. Mm -hmm. Cause and effect. So one fundi told me and said, we are linear thinkers because we still think the world is flat. Do we? <laughs> we know the world is not flat, but what do we operate on flat environments here? Yeah. Cause and effect. And it sounds like our education that you and I got forced us into this type of thinking. So we have a type of thinking in a world that that does not exactly fit in. Okay, let's see. Uh, in a non-linear relationship, the cause does not produce the proportional effect. What you think is going to happen is not always going to happen. You drive the car, you apply the brakes, it should stop. You didn't see the oil patch, so it didn't stop. And I think what they are trying to tell us that you, you, we should start thinking broader than just the normal effect that it's going to have. Okay. Reality is made up of circles, but we see straight lines. And herein lies the beginning of our limitation of our systems thinkers. Because we think on straight lines, cause and effect. 
research with young children indicates that we have latent skills as system thinkers and that are underdeveloped and repressed by formal education. Now come on, think back on your education system and your education that you have. Most of the studies that you've studied, were you made in the exams and the tests to think or were you made to remember most of the stuff to remember? Both. Which subject did you have to think broader? That would be great. Corporate communication. <laughs> Wonderful. That's why I'm doing this with you. English. English? It's because English you're more taught about like grammar and... No, yeah, but those are rules and regulations. Yeah, but then in the paper, you make an answer to comprehension you've never seen in your life, and you have to now apply. apply. So, you have to answer. so there were some instances that we that we changed that day. Not that we also, even in the time that I had education, it was when you study history like I did, you obviously have to to study, uh, you know, lots of facts and figures to 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 remember. Uh, Western languages, interesting, are based towards a linear world because of their subject-to-verb-object structure. Because that's the way we talk, subject-to-verb-object. I know nothing about Chinese, but why are they better in math than us? Because they got a school phone. Ah. <laughs> I don't know, I can't answer that question. But um, can you see where, where we are thinking that in terms of our education, which is very formal and structured, even maybe still today. Uh, Western languages, this structure trains our brains to link together thoughts in the same way. So to a certain extent, what they are telling us is that we think the way we think because we are programmed that way, we were educated that way. And what, what is necessary today is that we, we move to this type of thing where we take all of that into consideration. And we'll see now. In the real world, Boundaries don't exist. They're only boundaries of thought and perception and social agreement. And I'm always reminded of the saying, the sky is the limit. Not so? Because we say boundaries do not exist, the sky is the limit. And even some people came later on to say, but the sky is not the limit. So you can even go further than the sky. Eh? Okay? Um, in decision making, rationality of individuals is limited by the information that we have. And what they show us there is that that little boat fishermen are not aware of the total number of fish in the ocean or how many fish others harvest. This is a typical example of a dilemma referred to as the tragedy of commons, a situation in which a group of individuals act rationally in their own self-interest and deplete a shared limited resource. Now this thing is in the news all the time. In fact there was a piece on fisheries last night on carte blanche not on the same issue, on a different issue. And um, But the point that they are making is that we limited in our thinking because we don't know how much fish down there is. They do research and all of that but and then they say well you can't have that many and that's why we have quota system but some people just argue rationally and say well you know, I, I need, my workers need to be paid and I don't care about that, so we're going to deplete that. Even if it's depleted, you don't think further about the consequences of that. And that's really not, you know, systems thinking. Individuals also inhibited by their mental models in the images, assumptions and stories in which we carry our minds of ourselves and other people, institutions and every aspect of the world. And the, if I look at that, I would say what is known to us is obviously the top part that we know and we don't know this part down here and what the effect can be and we have to start thinking about that we have to start thinking about that on what the effects are on our organizations broader we have to think broader and I think this is the point they, they're trying to make here um, systems fools us by presenting themselves as a single event uh, well known the stock market crash in 1929 they said Black Tuesday, I thought it was a Friday this single event was overemphasized and other more important events influencing the Great Depression were less salient for instance the 200,000 factory workers being replaced by machines and the farmland value 
falling by 40%. But don't we have the same situation in the modern world now? Who's, who's replacing workers? These things in front of us. Technology, not so? Has a huge impact on, obviously it created a lot of work, but it's got a huge impact on, on labor and retrenchments and so on. Uh, it just show us there that it's uh, patterns of behavior when the Great Depression uh, started after that. The effect, by the way, in terms of South Africa, after the stock market fell in 1929, we had three years of virtually no rain in South Africa, and our economy then was an agricultural economy. It wasn't an industrial economy. So you can imagine the effect that that had on South Africa uh, recession and depression. What's the difference? What is a recession? How does it work? Yeah? Anybody knows the, the concept of when do we say we are now in a recession? When everybody's poor. When everybody's poor. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> but there's a specific definition of recession. Yeah? Recession yes? Recession becomes when, like, let me say, in examples, for example, when they had the depression, everything, all systems collapsed, everyone was poor, like, there was no income, people lost their jobs, people can be paid, the economic system sort of collapses. Yeah. Whereas if you have a recession, it means that maybe inflation goes higher and that things become more expensive or like life becomes more expensive to the government. Yeah, I think you, you're right on the first one. The, the definition for recession, the way I know it, is that because we measure economic growth over quarters, four quarters of the year, if you have two quarters in a row where there was a negative growth, then you call it a recession. So end of last year, the last three months, beginning three months of this year, you have a negative growth, then you would have a, a, a recession. That's, that's what it's called. A depression, obviously, what happened in three years of... And to get out of that is, is a major problem. In fact, they also, uh, the fundies discussed that the possibility of us going after 2008 with, with this whole credit crisis in Europe, going into a, a depression, and sometimes I wonder whether we're really out of the woods yet. From a system theory, what happened in France and in Greece yesterday? Oh, the president's elections. Two new, two new governments. That's going to affect the economies of Europe. So we'll see how that one. The last one, yeah, I just want to show you that, that slide. But the sentence I want to show you is that one there. System structures are created by choices people make consciously or unconsciously over time. So these are structures that we have created. Okay. I just want you to, to take note of that. Okay. 